Fossil evidence of human evolution is historic, human evolution, evolutionary history is fragmentary and open to various interpretations. Fossil evidence of chimpanzee evolution is absent altogether. Nature Magazine, volume 412. Marvin Lubinow's book and uh, Coazzo's book, they may disagree on whether something is human or ape, but there's a much, much bigger point you are totally missing. I'll share it with you here. Absolutely no fossil could possibly prove evidence. It could not be used as evidence for evolution. If you walked into a court of law and said, Your Honor, this is the ancestor of humans today. Anybody with half a brain in their head would say, Your Honor, he can't prove this fossil had any kids. You certainly can't prove it had different kids. Why on earth would you think a bone you found in the dirt can do something animals today cannot do? Animals today produce the same kind. Why would you think it was different long ago and far away? That's my whole point. That is not science. That's a religion. Now, if you want to believe this is an ancestor of anybody, you can believe whatever you want, but that's not science, and it shouldn't be, you shouldn't be using taxpayers' dollars to spread your religion in the public school system, plain and simple. Now, that's my point number one. No fossil, no fossil could possibly count as evidence for evolution. It, it couldn't count because you can't demonstrate it had any kids. And the fact that you find a bone in the dirt lower than some other bone you found in the dirt, that doesn't prove any relationship either. I mean, a freshman law student would have a heyday with evolution, disproving it. It'd be so simple in the average court of law. The problem is evolution doesn't have to be proven in a court of law. It only has to be made believable for students to come to school. And here's some student in the school who has a fear of his teacher because the teacher has an academic and a psychological advantage over him. And now he's going to be taught this stuff and he doesn't dare question it too loudly or it might affect his grade or his possibility for graduation. Secondly, I'd like to point out the similarities between these creatures, and there are many similarities, I'll be quick to agree, okay, I taught biology and anatomy for many years. There are thousands of similarities. The similarity demonstrates a common designer. It doesn't demonstrate a common ancestor. There's thousands of parts off a Chevy that'll fit, you know, off a Chevy Corvette that'll fit on a Chevy Lumina. Thousands of parts will interchange. That doesn't prove they're all evolving from a skateboard. They're all coming from General Motors. Hello, okay? So the similarities you're finding in these skulls is just as much evidence for a common designer of these creatures. They have similarities like binocular vision, both eyes on the front of the head as opposed to the sides, because humans and chimpanzees have similar tasks to perform in life. They have to find their food, they have to find, see where they're going, they have to be able to do certain things. There are also thousands and thousands of differences between humans and chimpanzees. I mean, thousands of differences. They'll say, people will say, well, you know, humans and chimps are 98.6% similar, or 98.4% similar with current, uh, in, in their DNA structure. Well, first place, 1.6% of the DNA difference is an incredible amount of difference. The fellow who was in charge of the DNA uh, ge genome project, or one of the top, I think he was in charge of it. I've got the information here if my computer didn't lock up on me. According to evolution, things get better automatically, you know. But I cannot get it to work for me. Um, the guy in charge of the, uh, uh, I'll get the quote here for you since I've got two minutes left. He said, um, this 1.6% difference is absolutely incredible amount of difference. It amounts to 48 million nucleotides that are different. And a difference of only three nucleotides is nearly always fatal to the organism. I know somebody's not going to believe me, so I'll show you where he said it himself. Human DNA is incredibly complex. Okay. I think I've got the quote right here. Let's see. Similarity in DNA. Here we go. Dr. Barney Maddox, the leading genetic genome researcher, said, concerning these genetic differences, now the genetic difference between human and his nearest relative, he's not a nearest relative, folks, but Barney believes he is, okay? I know a good job we can get for Barney, too. Um, he says, we're relative to the champion. He said, this is at least 1.6%. That doesn't sound like much, but calculated out, there's a gap of 48 million nucleotides, and a change of only three nucleotides is fatal to an animal. There is no possibility of change. So two major points I would like you to address. Number one, the similarities could just as easily be demonstration of common creator. Why aren't students taught that? Why are they only taught one religious viewpoint as opposed to all religious viewpoints? Secondly, the... Uh, so-called ancestors, no fossil would demonstrate evidence for evolution. Absolutely none. It couldn't count in a court of law. Because, as I said, you can't prove it had any kids. Why on earth would you think a bone you found in the dirt is evidence for evolution? It can't be. 
if evolution is really true, let's watch it happen. Let's see it. And the argument will be, well, it happened so slowly we can't see it. Okay, then it's not science. It's something you believe happened, but that's not demonstrable in a laboratory. It's not testable. It's not part of science. And I just, I, I resent them cutting down our perfectly good trees to print that stuff in a textbook. You know, where's Al Gore when you need him, okay? Um, so, my answer to your question is very simple. Yes, there are thousands of similarities. I don't know if this was a human or an ape. It doesn't matter. It, would, it wouldn't count as evidence for evolution because you couldn't prove it had any kids, okay? If there are species of extinct apes, and I'm sure there are thousands, you know, things that have gone extinct over the years. Thousands of animals have gone extinct. So what? That doesn't prove evolution either. That's the opposite of evolution. And so if you're using tax dollars to line these things up in your classroom and say, boys and girls, see, can't you see the similarity here? And some kid in your class says, uh, yes, teacher, doesn't this prove a common designer? You should say, well, you're right. It certainly could prove a common designer. We don't know. Why on earth are we discussing origins in science class anyway? Origins is not part of science. You, you're going to make somebody upset no matter which way you discuss it. Okay? Origins has no business being involved in, this, in the school system. It just shouldn't be discussed. Bigger question yet is, should we even have public schools? We'll get into that some other time. Thank you so much. The second question that we want to present to our debaters is, what is the origin and the age of the universe, and what is your method of determining it? And uh, Dr. Wagner, you will have uh, 17 minutes, and uh, Dr. Hovind, you will have 10. Sorry, this will take a second to get my um, monitor uh, working again. Well, I think I can, uh, let's see here. Uh, well, I think I can assure both uh, you, Dr. Hovind, and um, everyone here uh, that I will never again teach uh, about Nebraska Man and uh, Piltdown Man. Uh, those are permanently out of my lecture notes for all time. Um, thank you. Uh, right, and um, uh, yes, I did note uh, uh, Java Man, which of course was um, you know, simply a, a, in the original find, it was a skull cap and a leg bone found from, uh, uh, found, from um, uh, found a long distance away. Um, I do hope you will allow me to uh, mention the uh, Sangiran uh, Two Skull, uh, which turned up uh, in the, uh, I don't remember the exact date, I believe it was in the 1980s, uh, which is basically a skull with most of the face uh, still present. Um, I can drop Lucy if, uh, if you really think I should, uh, but a um, fossil found in a cave in South Africa called uh, Sterkfontein, uh, known as uh, Littlefoot, uh, has recently turned up, uh, which they are still getting out of the ground, but it appears to be a complete um, Australopithecine. Um, if you'll let me teach about that, I, I suppose that's, that's uh, fair. Um, Neanderthals are old men with arthritis. Uh, yes, of course, the first complete Neanderthal skull found at a place in France called La Chapelle aux Saints uh, was definitely an old man who was stooped with uh, arthritis. Uh, the, uh, the baby Neanderthal skeletons that have turned up at a few locations in Europe probably weren't, uh, but I won't teach about those if you'd rather I not. I certainly don't want to upset uh, um, upset anybody. Oh, incidentally, uh, this is um, a reconstruction of the skull of Peking Man, 